So my name is Christine Dove, and I will today so introduce different uh, initiatives led by worldwide scientists to transcend geographical boundary and to share many our knowledge with students from developing countries. So the outline of my talk so will be first to introduce the scientific and technological paradigm and then how we could apply it thanks to different platforms and I will introduce two of them mainly and then I will conclude by the different accelerator and particles etc led in the world. So the different uh, technological paradigms evolution we see here so this curve that shows over the years and the decades and the millennium so how the different economical value have been added from what science gives possibility to uh, raise and then based on this science so we have different technology that give us a better uh, maturity and then to implement all those things in businesses and in the society in organization so i take here so three example of those revolutions so the industrial revolution the information revolution and the molecular revolution so those evolution over the time as well show how through science with the different development and discovery with solid state physics we made the possibility to build and to uh, use different ships and operating system the world wide web as well is a technology that have a huge impact and huge value added on our economy and we know now so with uh, the it and all the different uh, multimedia how important this information and sharing information is. So this society now has a, a direct use of the scientific development based on solid state uh, physics. So the case of uh, the uh, molecular uh, revolution as well is quite interesting because after the Second World War with discovery of ADN, we can say that all the science development were used then to be able then to develop different nanotechnology and biological uh, technology that uh, gave us now a better world as well and a better society. So how to build up uh, on all of that, you see that science is extremely important. So to reach now those paradigms, so there are, of course, the ideal, which is to transform our society. So we know that, of course, in developing countries, it's a bit more difficult because they don't have the different scientific infrastructure needed to be able to improve their way of living. So education is then a vector for that development. So this is why for the case of so fundamental physics and accelerator science, so that's uh, the, the topic of my own interest because I'm a, a scientist and uh, an engineer, so in accelerator uh, science. So we have developed different platforms, so from face-to-face -face summer school to then more now massive open online courses that give possibility for distance learning and possibility to then foster physics and science in Africa. So we want to, to share as well and to complement what is and what are those different worldwide initiatives already existing. And last but not least, of course, very important to keep this gender balance and to have an equal repartition as well of the gender. So through all of that, so we can say that science can transform, transcend boundaries. So I take now the example of uh, the African School of Fundamental Physics and Application, which has been uh, as a startup uh, in 2010, uh, so started in South Africa with the initiative of different uh, uh, so physicists, so mainly based on shown experiment, high energy physics, but as well to try to convey how we could improve and build up capacity in Africa by interpreting those different results. So it's a non-profit organization, so on the voluntary basis. So we have built uh, so different uh, um, access as well for contributing to a better world, to share our knowledge. And so far, so out of uh, so the financial support that we obtain, we can uh, give possibility up to 85 students to attend, so to pay the trip and then to attend for three weeks. Huh? Uh, those schools in the different countries in Africa. So it has been established on a two-year basis. So we repeat uh, those um, initiatives uh, in different countries of throughout Africa. So this is uh, as well the, the important thing to spread out in different geographical area, this knowledge, so that we can emphasize as well on different hosted countries. So how to build up uh, uh, capacity in Africa in a global way. So, we provide as well high quality courses, so by different renowned scientists, and that's as well, um, so the importance of our contribution to try to, to keep the quality and to have a possibility to, 
uh, involve students as well. So in 2018, I take the different um, map of uh, the profile that we had. So a lot of uh, students come from the hosted country, of course, because it's uh, uh, the possibility for them to be as well more empowered. So we see the gender balance that is as much as we can uh, respect it. But out of all those different applications, so we have uh, the need of uh, so having not the quota specifically because we want some uh, good students, but we try to spread uh, uh, the, the different uh, um, students' uh, choice uh, so to the different edition. So in, uh, two, in, in this 2018, so we have as well see the evolution from the first edition in uh, the African school. So we were trying to have a lot of masters and PhD students so that they can really follow the courses. But now we try to adapt as well and try to, to have a bit younger students so that we can have more impact as well on their career path and try to give them a broader range as well of interest uh, that they could be applying in their own uh, studies in the future and then in, um, in their life, in the career path. So the selection and the field of the different students really comes from so the nuclear and particle uh, scientists uh, to the general physics, material science, renewable energy. So it really depends uh, on the profile and on the, uh, the country um, uh, discipline that I taught. But astrophysics is as well uh, an important part uh, of uh, what we're teaching and who the students come from in terms of their own field of expertise. So the sponsoring of this course, so which is important, so the finance of uh, all those students that come from those different universities in Africa towards this uh, hosted uh, um, university where it uh, happened, uh, depends year after year, but then so beyond the uh, support of the APS. Huh? So we have about 20 to 27 different institutions uh, and, and scientific laboratories that uh, support us. Huh? So with the, the framework of the ICTP, so International Center for Theoretical Physics in Trieste, so led by UNESCO and um, financed as well by the, the, the Italian government. So this gives as well the possibility to uh, take ticket, uh, plane, uh, pay tickets for the student, but as well ICTP has uh, this uh, um, uh, framework of those uh, three weeks. Uh, that is what we have uh, chosen in 2010 to be the, the, the basis and the matrix of our school. So they arrange so different uh, student travel, but then as well, they use, we use those different platforms to be able to select the different student that will come to that school. So the host country, so is as well having an important support, so in kind uh, with respect to the teacher and the, the, the professor that are helping us, but as well with the different government and the support uh, financially for getting the, the different uh, category or, or the different uh, uh, housing for our students. So we try to have uh, as well to empower the African uh, different university by having their uh, own support as well. So the African contributor are about 50% so in the case of, uh, of uh, Namibia, the South African uh, edition. So South Africa is as well a, a large provider of uh, for, oh, that's funding. So the lectures as as well coming on voluntary basis. So it means that uh, their own institute most of the time are paying for their own um, so travel and, um, and, and housing. So in uh, the um, given countries. So the International Organizing Committee, so this is a little group of people, so about uh, so five to six of us, uh, who write uh, the different proposals such for the different uh, financial uh, support, and then we get then the possibility to, to, um, to centralize all those funding, so in South Africa, and then to um, organized with the lecturers as well, the contents uh, of uh, those courses. So those courses, those topics of interest are mainly split in uh, three different types. So theoretical physics, experimental physics, accelerator and application, and high performance uh, computing. So this is since 2010, uh, the, uh, the, the type of study that we have been uh, teaching. So from nuclear and physics, uh, 
particle, mainly because it's based on knowledge from Sean, from the LHC, but from uh, the Tevatron, or for, for as well as through particles, which is important because in Africa, with this clear sky and not too much pollution, so it's an excellent place for, for, for the cosmology and the observation as well of the sky. So heavy ion physics uh, are, are important, and then we get as well some different hands-on activities where we can teach as well to the student how to best um, interpret the different uh, um, uh, way on how to use uh, particle detectors. So for uh, all of that, so we teach them as well different uh, language, so like uh, with uh, the Gen4, Linux, or, or, or other type of, um, of, uh, of language, computing language. So now we have as well the accelerator that are what uh, those different um, uh, physics tools are using at the beginning. So we teach them about uh, so accelerator physics, uh, about different instrumentation that are used on those accelerator, and as well all the different spin off from that. So meaning like uh, the medical application or the different energetic application, and then now as well for high performance computing. So we now adapt as well to the country where we host those editions since for instance in the case of Morocco so quantum computer and uh, and um, and, um, and artificial intelligence is as well of uh, their interest so we adapt and so since 2010 so the backbone of this program is really to have those three weeks of intensive school so for the student so up to now, we have on the order of uh, 320 students that uh, came uh, to those different schools. So they are uh, so in this wide range, but then so beyond this school as well, beyond this academical support. So we go with uh, um, trying to foster uh, further so physics in the different countries in Africa. So for that, we have this forum and outreach days in which we try to involve policymakers and we try to promote different activities so that they could be as well something that remains in those countries. So then in addition to uh, this backbone program, so we have added as well a program for teaching teacher in order to expand further as well our need and interest of uh, fostering physics and the, the derivative in Africa. So we are teaching up to 70 different students. So what are the interests as well that they could bring to their own students or throughout um, their own high school. And we have as well now expanding even further our program by going to different um, high school and we are encouraging those different learners now. The learners are from so 13 to 17 or 18 years old and before they come to university it's good for them to see what physics, fundamental physics and etc. science can bring to them. So all of that uh, so give them as well through some games the possibility to better understand what they could do and in, uh, in their future and how to motivate them. So we have added as well in our program this conference. So in parallel as well to so those three weeks of school. So we have this one week where we invite former alumni, so former students from, from DSP. And uh, we try as well to have a, a nice distribution of the different uh, research facilities from some of the lectures that will come uh, around the world to network as well and improve the collaboration for our students, but then as well for, for the international the research infrastructure that arise. So as well, the sustainability of this program from those different research infrastructure as well is this mentor-mentee -mentor program to which from those students, some of them are selected to be followed. And then we provide as well for them the possibility to, to better understand how their study could be I mean, directed. So we don't replace, uh, of course, uh, the, um, so the, 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 uh, the advisor, but then we try to give them some tips and we try to, to, to support as well the future by, for instance, having possibility to offer some, uh, uh, some uh, internship or some different uh, uh, scholarship uh, for, uh, for their world, uh, for their work. So that's also an important program in which uh, we, of course, invite a lot of researchers to, to come and join to help us. So the students who are the main ingredient, I would say, of um, the success as well of this potential little initiative but to try to foster Africa. This is really from the diversity of them that uh, we can really link and make this melting pot uh, a success. So they are really from masters, PhD students, but as well now bachelor as we mentioned. So the diversity as well of their uh, discipline, so they are from different knowledge, so it has to be really 
um, torch in a level that they could really grab some idea of uh, all those different uh, um, disciplines that we're teaching. They are coming from different many countries in Africa. And we tried really to look for having a lot of uh, girls so that are really the, as well the light motive for the success of, uh, of uh, those editions. So the, the perfect melting pot is achieved through them. And as well, we try to have a, a, so local university student, but as well professor to be engaged so that they know a bit more locally what is, um, what is happening. So all the students, so we, we have as well a survey to try to improve our editions uh, years after years. Uh, so you see here, for instance, out of those survey, the distribution. So a lot of students are still studying after those school. So some of them are as well working in parallel to their full studies. Uh, even if a lot of the student remains uh, within their own institute, quite a lot of them goes to different countries in Africa. So depending also about on the, the infrastructure available and what are, are their um, um, direction uh, for their own studies. So a lot of them also are going to Europe, some in uh, North America and some in Asia. So it's really interesting to see and to follow up uh, so their work. So now out of this backbone of those, uh, uh, this African School of uh, Fundamental Theories and Application is this forum and outreach days so that we can really foster a bit further um, the possibility of getting or keeping some spin-off in the different countries. So the first edition was in 2010 in Stellenbosch, South Africa. And there we had presentation from uh, the government, um, so chief director for emerging research area infrastructure. And uh, so Dr. Adams was uh, describing uh, the evolution as well in South Africa. And we had then possibility with Sean as well to see how to get then a further involvement um, so that uh, South Africa after that edition, so sponsored as well for the postdoc or for the student uh, from South Africa to work at CERN or vice versa. So the second edition was in Kumasi, Ghana. So there we show during this forum um, and outreach day how compact accelerator as well could be a possibility to expand the knowledge and uh, uh, the fostering uh, science in Africa. And we had as well a very interesting uh, um, expansion as well from accelerator um, compact uh, to larger accelerator with this African light source so presented uh, uh, so by uh, so Professor Herman Winnick who was celebrating his birthday at that time. So this African light source as a matter of fact was then launched in 2014 uh, with uh, so the um, it's uh, so African light source interim so steering committee it was launched then during that edition even if it was in the middle of the Ebola crisis. So we had in 2014 as well a very uh, successful forum still even because of uh, due to the, the lack of, uh, of lecturer that couldn't come because of uh, the Ebola we had for our students so Professor uh, Amadun Touré who came from the ITU from uh, Geneva uh, for the International Telecommunication Union and he gave a, um, an amazing presentation and we had uh, that I will speak about later on and Professor Amadun Wage as well important for the the um, ATS, and then as well, uh, he was from the hosted with um, uh, Omar Durka, the, um, uh, the possibility to show as well what the host university um, has been doing and, and, and providing. So then in 2016, we went to Kigali in Rwanda, and there as well with the government, we had a very important uh, and very good feedback on how physics can be evolving in those countries with the ICTP, which is now also a center in, uh, which has opened a center in Kigali, Rwanda, so expanding further uh, the capacity to, uh, to build up uh, uh, science and use it for, for African development. So, and in 2018, so in Namibia, we showed as well how different large projects, like for instance, the SKA, so with um, the, uh, Dr. Rob Adam as well. So how the synergy between Namibia and South Africa can give them raise uh, to different um, uh, schools, different knowledge and sharing different schools. So the focus now on the, so this was the, the, the 16th of uh, August, 2014, with this forum days, which focus uh, uh, with, the, with one of the focus, which was on the ICT speech of uh, Dr. Amadou Touré, as I mentioned, so, Director, um, uh, Secretary General of the ITU for 
for, for two mandates and he's a very important uh, character coming from um, Mali uh, with a uh, uh, lot of respectful uh, way of, uh, of, of using his knowledge uh, of ICT and to expand it as well through uh, out Africa. So he showed to our students and our so invited how uh, it's important to be digitally smart nowadays. So this is really what will give us a better possibility for improving this uh, employment market. So that's uh, uh, what uh, he was um, discussing during his speech uh, together with uh, the mapping and the survey of what has been evolving uh, in Africa and uh, even if the bandwidth is still weak. So there is really most of uh, the country that are now having the access uh, to, uh, to the internet. So then we can really change and find ways to find solutions through this uh, digitally smart world uh, and a large and improvement as well of the society comes from uh, empowering as well girls and in that case for instance the ITU has supported uh, so 10 different students for this ASP edition and five of them were girls as well from the less developed country so you can have access to his speech huh? and then you can really um, see how he was trying to to show how important uh, this uh, uh, digital so the possibility as well to use uh, um, mobile learning, so those uh, MOOC, Massive Open Online course, uh, in our daily life. Uh, so this is really the, 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 the important things uh, that uh, we can use. So distance learning as well, because this was in the middle of the Ebola crisis, as we said. Uh, and um, we see it nowadays as well with our case of the corona, so how important uh, um, distance learning and massive learning beyond that uh, can be useful. So, um, Professor Ahmed Touré is as well the father founder of Smart Africa, so in Kigali, uh, so in, uh, in Rwanda. So from having the possibility so to transform all those different countries into a single uh, so digital uh, um, market, uh, digital Africa. So this is now so 24 different countries that are connecting together and they find really ways to encourage the different job creation in those countries thanks to the ICT and thanks to, to, to a way to move towards um, uh, a knowledge-driven economy. And uh, it's really the, um, a catalyst platform uh, that uh, can transform Africa. So they are showing as well how uh, artificial intelligence could be one of the factors and one of the help uh, for getting as well this goal rich. Uh, and you can see from the manifesto that is available on this website a lot of uh, this information. So now I will speak about uh, um, complementary project that uh, so as well I, I, I participated to or created. So with the Nordic uh, Particle Accelerator project. So back in 2000, uh, end of 2011, I moved back from America to Europe. And then there, so with different colleagues as well, we looked at uh, so what was needed and how we could as well foster the knowledge of uh, accelerator science based on so our neighbor which are working at TSS as I was mentioning European Spallation Source, our neighbor is a light source MAX4 and we try to see based on those two infrastructure what and how accelerator as well can uh, can give potentiality for um, different students so in the northern of Europe but as well in the rest of the world and as well in uh, in Africa and it was kind of uh, this talk as well from uh, Professor Madun uh, Touré, who was uh, an eye-opener in terms of how we could do and what all those different uh, um, tools could bring as well to students in Africa, because they have internet and now we need to build up different platforms uh, to make uh, a user-friendly tools for them to learn. So existing in, uh, initiative already have been looked at and we try to be complementary to all of them. So particle accelerator school, whether in Africa or in, uh, in Europe, uh, have been as well uh, of great support. Um, and uh, we have uh, then based on a first face-to-face -face summer school, so in 2014, identify different university in the north of Europe and try from their dedicated professor and the chosen program build up um, a MOOC. So those, uh, um, so, 
this, this grant has been provided thanks to this proof of concept from this school, but then it gave us the possibility to build up more summer school and then to build up those massive open online course. So now it means that thanks to Erasmus Plus grant, so through the strategic partnership for higher education, so we passed from about 90 students that we had during uh, those uh, three different summer school to more than 2,500 students now, so with uh, the MOOC. Uh, so students from everywhere in the world that can follow that, including the developing country and hopefully a lot from the developing country. So we have uh, reached uh, an excellent grade as well that gave us some satisfaction and potentially as well some capacity to, to, future, to future program and future MOOC or different e-learning. So the topic that we embrace are mainly so to introduce particle accelerators, so with light source, so why and what uh, um, an accelerator can be used uh, for in terms of life science expertise and how it could improve and develop uh, uh, the, our life. So by showing the max four light source, but as well the spallation source, uh, the ESS. Where I work, but also what has been uh, with the LHC where I worked as well, but with uh, the possibility to, to show the, um, the use and how based on this different knowledge we can build up uh, our different uh, uh, way of teaching and, and building other accelerators around the world. So the uh, tools uh, uh, to build those accelerators, so they are shown and they are developed in the second uh, a MOOC, so with um, description of uh, the RF system that accelerate the particles, the magnet technology that steer uh, so those different particles, the beam diagnostic to understand what the beam is doing, and then the different media in which uh, everything is evolving. So we had a third MOOC to have uh, an applied case where most of the, the accelerator are used for, so they're used for uh, medical application. So this is why we like to emphasize how with radiotherapy or with proton therapy, we can have ways as well to serve the society with and thanks to accelerator. So now I'll show just here like how all those four different weeks of uh, distance learning are, are organized. So with the example of the first MOOC, so you have, uh, so in that case, for instance, in one week, you have to see uh, five different videos. In between the videos, we have quiz that give possibility to see and to digest uh, the different information um, given. So there are readings and ways as well to, to have a library that can help you as well to, to improve as well different knowledge. And weeks after weeks, so you can follow the different uh, topic. Of course, it's not explicitly one week because it can be like uh, you take it in uh, one day or you can take it in three months so it's really uh, depending on your own interest so you don't have to follow as well in, um, uh, in a strictly um, chronological way but as well the different topic you can skip depending on your own interest so i show for the MOOC 2 how it looks so this is based on a platform called coursera so it's free of charge so it means that uh, we can really learn um, and even come back to the fundamentals to better understand and how all those different um, particles will travel for this example. We have here the example of Professor um, so Anders Carlson, who explain and whenever he explain the physics uh, and the, the phenomenology of that. So there is as well the script uh, that you can follow and uh, you can really get then a better understanding of uh, all the explanation. So I show here, so the last MOOC with, uh, so the accelerator uh, application, so with this medical um, particle uh, accelerator, uh, we have there more than 1,200 students, so that follow it, very useful and important as well for um, life uh, as well of, uh, of scientists. And you see here how our operator as well. You see here how it's structured by the different quiz and the different uh, uh, estimation of um, what we are following. So now I will finish so be, by having some different um, examples of accelerator and different initiatives as well in developing country, how they can become really and how they already are tools for transforming as well our society. 
So we all know that uh, um, X-ray are used in every airport, they are used in our daily basis as well, and they are really for a lot of us the possibility to monitor any disease or any problem that we would encounter. So whether it's with photon or with, um, with adron or with, um, with uh, electron, so we have uh, the possibility in the medical world to improve our uh, our, our society and our knowledge of society. So I'll show here some different uh, distribution on where those more than 35,000 uh, accelerators are used in the world. So a lot of them are available for many applications in society. A lot of them for iron implementation, for the fabrication of a semiconductor. Uh, there is as well a lot of those accelerators that are used for radiotherapy, for medical application. And you see here the raising number of patients that can be uh, so treated uh, thanks to radiotherapy. So medical uh, isotope production as well, uh, a small fraction, but as well with um, so those, so research infrastructure like the photon source or like uh, those different protons that are accelerated in linear accelerator for building as well neutron source, small portion, but then MAX4 and ESS, as I mentioned. So those large accelerators, maybe the most famous one with the LHC, they are collider for fundamental physics. So they are maybe a small distribution, but they are the most uh, visible, I'd say. So visibility, so like here, so for the LHC, so you see at CERN in Geneva, so since 2008, the operation of uh, this 27 kilometers, uh, uh, so cyclotron, uh, synchrotron. So there is as well in uh, Fermilab, so in the uh, US as well, the equivalent that just stopped, but then over the years, uh, so it has been an evolution perpetual of uh, those different uh, large uh, scale, big tools to understand better what we are made of and how we can improve our daily life as well. So two order of magnitude smaller, so it was in 2034. So Ernest Lawrence that has here the first cyclotron in his hand, you can see how with only so 80 kilo um, electron volt, uh, there was already this transformation and the understanding on how we could uh, use um, the, um, the, the, the different electron and uh, potential, meaning like the, the, the evolution over the time at a different energy, as it's shown here, of the different type of accelerator. So all this um, knowledge, so those big accelerators, they can be used so in the developed country because of all this funding capacity. International collaboration are indispensable. So this is what we're using for CERN or for, for a lot of uh, those um, as well light source, not light source, sorry, but uh, neutron source, for instance. Light source, they are more at uh, the national level, but in rich countries. And this is the possibility to involve university with student, professor that use as well research laboratory, where all those big tools allocated and all of those research benefits and are as well um, so ordered by uh, the industry. So big science is like what has been presented in 2012 by Professor Luca Serafini uh, during the AST. And this is as well as he showed what we could implement as well in uh, developing countries with more accessible compact accelerator. So with on the order of uh, 10 million, there is the possibility as well to do the same, so to connect universities with those research laboratories, those research infrastructure, and then to get uh, the spin-off uh, that the industry needs, and then to better develop uh, uh, life uh, um, based on science in those uh, different countries. So I show here the example, for instance, uh, in Calabria of this project of compact accelerator called STAR, 24 meters long, and the possibility then to accelerate uh, uh, different electrons and to produce as well with university some research that can be then uh, used for industry. So this is mass production later on, but this is a start and this is an example on how it could be um, evolving. So the um, different, um, at bigger scale, the different country can as well, or as in the developed country, we have light source in different countries, the light source or the African light source, huh? later on, so could uh, get a better understanding on um, so different uh, um, 
so way of understanding material. So thanks, for instance, to X-ray. So the the yeah the the, the X-ray. So they they are scattered as well with the electrons around the atom. So it means that uh, we can better see metals like uh, we were mentioning in uh, the airport. So this is what it will be very. Um, um, very sensitive to, but with neutron as well, so with neutron source, so we would be more sensitive uh, to um, high to the hydrogen on as well to uh, so the deuterium in this case, so which is very important as well for the um, understanding of the, the biological sample. So some kind of complementarity, of course, between the X-ray and the neutron. You see here, for instance, for a molecule of water, how it looks with X-ray and how it would look with neutron. So this um, um, light source, so we have uh, a lot of them in the world. There is as well an emphasis on the SESAMI, which is like a program uh, based on special funding as well, so in Jordan. And here it was presented so by uh, Professor Katarina Biscari, who is as well the CEO of uh, uh, the uh, Spanish light source, uh, so in Alba. So she is very important as well in all the initiative, uh, and she has been since the beginning, uh, almost the beginning, involved as well with our African uh, school. Um, very important, like a lot of other um, presenters in uh, this um, named in this presentation. So I emphasize as well here. So the. Uh, leaflet, uh, the brochure um, produced by the, the IPS as well, and uh, with a, a lot further information about light source distribution. So now the African light source, uh, so as we mentioned, so in 2012, then 2014, and now since 2015, so we have possibility to better understand this roadmap. So there is, um, so since Grenoble and uh, this uh, conference that was held at uh, Grenoble at the ESRF, huh? so more than 55 members are connected. So you can see more from uh, this presentation given by Professor Simon Connell from uh, South Africa. Uh, so the second edition, uh, uh, the second conference uh, was held uh, in uh, um, in uh, Kigali, so that was uh, in Accra, sorry, in Ghana, so in 2019. So you can see as well a lot of the uh, outcomes uh, in those links. And uh, the next uh, edition uh, of uh, this conference will be uh, in Kigali in 2020, November, so we hope. So the, the different uh, aspect of what the African light source can give, and it can really provide a lot. It can really embrace the different capacity as well to learn about uh, the, the heritage, uh, but as well, uh, it can really help for energy opportunity for the different understanding of uh, the, uh, the, 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 health, uh, the health science and uh, the uh, industry improving, uh, so through those projects. So the multidisciplinarity, disciplinarity, this is mainly what uh, can be reached. Uh, so even from the political asset to the possibility to implement with the students those research in those different countries and to try to help and tackle different diseases, as we said here, Ebola. But as well, beyond that now, we could add with the corona and to have um, really possibility to, to, to foster science and, and build up capacity in Africa. So the last example so is as well with the SESAMI, so the light source in Jordani. So this uh, wonderful initiative as well from uh, so Professor Galeb Natur, so working in Yulish, so working as well with the ESS. Huh? But uh, in uh, Yulish, so the um, German uh, government so has given possibility as well to support further some beam line in the SESAMI and uh, with different students so they have already reached quite a, a successful possibility to better foster uh, science uh, for the Palestinian students. So all of that to say that science uh, can transcend boundaries through the dedicated program. And we are really happy that uh, at least uh, two of those different programs, even if they are really small uh, in this puzzle, could find ways to contribute as well to improve uh, the um, the, the, the world and try to find how to empower students and really try to find ways to transform as well the developing country into developed country. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>